Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back. My name is Sarah and I'll be guiding you through class here today. So today's class is the last class in the balance series. Um, as I've previously said, you can do this as one series or you can do this as one class. It doesn't matter, they're not linked in any way. It's just looking at balance in different ways is all. Um, so today's class um, doesn't actually have a name. Um, yeah, let's just call it balance. <laughs> um, there's a lot involved in this one today in terms of um, components. Um, so we will be working towards half moon, but we'll be throwing a little bit of eagle in there, um, warrior three variations. Um, so I suppose in essence, we could call this a one-legged flow, um, but it's not completely one-legged, but we will find ourselves um, balancing on one leg quite a lot through this class. Um, as always, there will be variations and modifications offered along the way. Um, so, yeah, please don't feel like you have to find a Warrior 3 that is, for example, this variation. Warrior 3 can also be this variation, this variation you can even use blocks in. Just modify for your own needs and your own practice. Um, yeah, and as always, if there's something that is not appealing to you, Feel free to park this and leave it also. Um, yeah, really hope you enjoy this class. Um, I had fun practicing it. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, we're going to start in Supta Baddha Konasana, so recline butterfly. Um, so find yourself all the way onto your back and come to bend the knees, plant the feet on towards the earth. Come to bring the feet so they might touch and then slowly start to take the knees out towards the long edges of the mat, opening up through the hips until the soles of the feet come together. If you notice this setup straight away feels a bit too uncomfortable for you, maybe take the legs a little bit longer down the mat or maybe it's the other way you bring them closer. You might like to prop some blocks underneath the knees, underneath the thighs maybe. And then come to settle on in. So the palms might be facing up and down away from the body, or maybe they're even resting on the body. I quite like to, in Supta Baddha Konasana, always bring my hands to my hip joints, my pelvic area. And then come to close down the eyes or take a soft gaze if it is there for you. Come to tune on into the breath into your anchor. Maybe taking a deep inhale through the nose if it's there for you and a big sigh out through the mouth. And coming to do that two more times if that felt good for you, inhaling through the nose and a big sigh out through the mouth. And taking that one more time. Coming to settle into the present moment here. Allow all of the external resources of the day or external to your room to be external. To bring yourself into this moment, into your practice and your space. Becoming conscious of the breath. Allowing the breath and its natural rhythm to exist here. And then start to bring some awareness to the pace of the breath. To the inhale versus the exhale. And then when you feel ready, start to, once you've become aware of the pace, start to make your exhale so it is longer than your inhale. So you might like to encourage a count here to assist you with this. So it could be a count for inhaling for two and exhaling for three. Or maybe shorter, inhaling for one, exhaling for two. Just taking any variation of length, being mindful if you do increase and you go for an inhale of three, exhale of four, does it feel fluid or does it feel forced? Just simply observing, not judging and offering yourself here the needs that your body requires today. 
by doing that increase on the exhale. And if the mind does wander, gently guide it back. And then on your next breath, allow the breath to come back to its natural rhythm. And just resuming the natural flow. Bringing the hands to the outside of the thighs, helping the ha helping to draw the thighs into one another. Knees come to meet, take the feet out as wide as the mat. Allow the knees to knock into one another for a moment of restorative pose here. Maybe taking one more round of that big inhale through the nose and a nice long sigh out through the mouth. And then on your next breath, come to draw each knee in towards the chest, taking hold of the knees maybe with both hands, both hands wrapped and interlaced, or maybe the forearms around the front of the shins. If you've still got the eyes closed, you can still remain here, or maybe you might like to open them up and take some rocks side to side in your knees to chest. And come to place the feet back down towards the mat, taking the feet hip width apart. And then on your next breath, sending that right leg up towards the sky, flexing the toes towards the face. Bring the hands behind the back of the leg, back of the thigh. Maybe a little micro bend in the knee. And then slowly start to pulse the leg forward and back. Being mindful not to be forceful, just taking some gentle movements here. If that's not enough for you, maybe you might like to extend that left leg long. And if that's too much, maybe you're bringing in a more generous bend in the knee, to that right knee. Come to find some stillness, while still drawing that leg towards the chest. Maybe the hands come a little bit higher up the back of the leg. Or maybe they stay where they are. And then slowly start to walk that left leg away from you ever so slightly. It doesn't have to straighten all the way. Slowly start to take this right leg over towards the left side. You can always bend into that, um, that, right, that right knee and extend that left leg longer for a supine spinal twist. If you want to, you can still extend that right leg long. Just working with what feels good for you here. Maintaining that upper back towards the mat. Checking in with the breath. And then on your next breath, drawing the knee back through center. Hugging it in towards the body. And you can keep it bent, this uh, right knee. We're gonna take the right hand behind the back of the thigh, so behind the back of the knee. You might like to close it off as we then slowly guide that right knee out towards the right side. You can take the hand maybe around the front of the shin if that's more comfortable for you, and you can remain here. If that's not enough, you can always come to extend that leg long out towards the right side and maybe the hand comes underneath as an anchor, as a prop underneath the right thigh. Just being mindful that if you're doing so, is that left hip popping off of the mat, can you ground it back down? And maybe that means that you come out of that pose just ever so slightly. Taking a round of breath here. And then drawing that mean knee back through center, giving a little squeeze into the body. Coming to bend through that left leg and then come to plant the right knee back down to meet the left foot taking the feet so they're at hip width apart again. Drawing the left knee in towards the chest this time, giving it a little squeeze in towards the body, and then interlacing the hands around the back of the thigh. Come to send that right leg up towards the sky, toes are flexing towards the face, heel is being sent up towards the ceiling. And then just drawing that foot, that leg backwards and forwards, pulsing it in towards the body, and mindfully moving here. If 
that's not enough, maybe you extend that bottom leg, if it's too much, maybe you're bending and straightening through that left leg instead. Taking a round of breath here, and come to find some stillness while still drawing that left leg in towards the body. And then coming to slowly extend that left leg, that right leg down the mat long. Come to bend through that left knee, taking the left leg across the left side, right side of the body. You can either stay here or you can extend that left leg long. Maybe once again the hand is holding it underneath the left knee, giving it a support and a little cradle. Or maybe you're keeping it bent for a supine twist with knee bent or leg extended. And then on your next breath, drawing the leg back through center, give it a little squeeze in towards the body. A few variations, you can then take that left knee in towards the left hand and gently guide it out towards the left side, outside of the rib cage. Or you can extend that left leg long, maybe that right arm come, that left arm comes underneath the leg to act as a support stand. Once again, just noticing if that right hip is popping off of the mat, can you anchor it back down? Taking a round of breath here. And then coming back through centre, drawing both knees in towards the body, giving them a nice little squeeze in towards the chest. And then come to hover the knees so that they are around 90 degrees and these are stacked over the hips or thereabouts. Knees are drawing into one another, send the hands up towards the sky. And try to think about drawing navel into spine so that the low back is down towards the mat. If this is too much, you can come to bring the toes down towards the mat. Think about drawing the chin slightly in towards the chest to find some length through the spine, through the neck, sorry. And then on your next breath, send the right arm back behind you, fingertips reach into the back of the room, the left leg comes to extend long down towards the mat and hovers. Coming back through centre, drawing the knees back into one, one or would snow one another. And then send that left arm back behind you, right leg long to hover. Drawing everything back in through centre. Taking this one more round. Extending on the right side. And then coming to extend and draw back in on the left side. One round of breath through centre. And then taking another round here. Extending. And then drawing back in. Re-extending. And then drawing back in. Coming to place the feet down towards the mat. Take a round of breath here. few variations. You can either come to roll off to one side and find yourself up into a tabletop or you can come to lift the feet, bring the hands behind the back of the legs, knees are bent and rock backwards and forwards up and down the spine before coming up to find a seat. Coming into tabletop. You can either come to cross over at the ankles and lift up and over into tabletop or you can just come off to one side once you've found a seat. So when you're in tabletop, take a moment just to set up your foundation here. And then slowly start to walk the hands just a little bit ahead of you and draw the hips back, finding Balasana Child's Pose. Take a round of breath here. Maybe the knees are together or the knees are out wide. And then slowly start to take the hands over towards the left side. Finding a side body stretch through the right side of the body, anchoring down into the right hip. Maybe that right hand comes on top of left hand to find an additional stretch. Coming back through centre for a round of breath. And coming to walk over towards the right side this time, finding a stretch through the left side of the body. Maybe the left hand comes on top of the right hand. 
coming back through center, taking a round of breath here. Slowly walking the hands in towards the body, coming to find a seat over the top of the heels. Taking a round of breath. And then coming to find yourself into a tabletop, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips or thereabouts. When you feel ready, come to bring the knees in towards one another. Gazes down towards the mat. Really firming down into the hands on your next breath. Come to lift the right knee out towards the right side. So think fire hydrant. So the leg is now hovering, the knee is in line with the hip or thereabouts. So I'll come over to this side to show you. And then come in to close the leg off again. And taking that two more times, opening and closing like a little clam. On the final third extension of sending the knee up towards the hip, come to extend the leg long, place that foot down and slowly start to walk the hands in towards the body, come up to rise. Send the hands up towards the sky. So the right toes are facing forward. And start to bring this right hand down towards the right hip or the right thigh or the right calf. And then start to stretch through the left hand, sending a nice long stretch down the side of the body. Gaze can either be up or down. Taking a round of breath here. Then bringing the hands back through centre, coming to place the hands back down to the earth, drawing that foot back in, come to tuck the toes under, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Taking a few little pedals out through the feet here. And then on your next breath, coming to ripple all the way forward, finding plank pose. Bending through the knees, hover the knees, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Taking that two more times, rippling forward, bending the knees, hover, hips up and back, downward facing dog. One more round. And then from your downward facing dog, taking a round of breath here. And then slowly start to send the heels over towards the right side of the mat. As you do so, coming potentially to send the hips ever so slightly down towards the right side of the mat. Finding that stretch that might be running alongside the right rib cage, stomach, armpit. I should say left, sorry, not right. And then coming back through centre. Taking a round of breath here. Coming to ripple forward, lower the knees, coming to find tabletop. From your tabletop, drawing the knees into one another if they're not already, firming down through the hands. Coming up to take the knee out towards the side, coming to hover the knee in line with the hips or thereabout. Coming to close that back off, drawing the left knee back in towards the right. Taking that again, opening up the leg to the side. And one more round. On this final round, come to extend that leg, flex the toes, place the foot down. Toes are facing forward. Start to walk the hands in towards the body, come up to rise. Send the hands up towards the sky. Slowly start to bring this left hand down to left hip or thigh or calf as you then start to reach over towards the right side, sending the left hand towards the right, uh, right hand over towards the left corner of the room. Finding that nice stretch along the left side, right side of the body. <laughs> left and right, so not there for me today, guys. And coming back through centre. Come to place the hands back down towards the mat, and gathering that knee back in towards the other knee. Tuck the toes under, lift the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Take a round of breath here. Coming to ripple forward. Find in plank and bend in the knees, hover the knees, lift the hips up and back for down dog. Take a round of breath before coming to ripple all the wolf all the way forward, coming onto tiptoes, sending shoulders over wrist, bend the knees, come to hover them, send the hips up and back. Coming forward one more time, finding that high plank, bend the knees, hips up and back for down dog. 
taking a round of breath here. Then come to turn the, the heels over towards the left side. Start to bend maybe a little bit through that left knee, send the hips slightly down towards the left side, finding that nice deep stretch along the right side of the body. And coming back up through center, taking a round of breath where you are in downward facing dog. And from downward facing dog, start to think about potentially taking your feet a little bit wider and your hands a little bit wider. So we're going to explore some balance here from alternate arms and alternate legs. So you might like to start to think about coming light through these right fingertips to begin with and firming down into that left hand, that left arm, while still pushing some weight into the back of the legs. Maybe this is where you stay or maybe you bring this right hand back behind you so it's sending energy to the back of the room, hovering beside the right leg. This might be where you stay. Or maybe you want to bring some weight into that left foot as you come onto the, onto the right foot as you come onto the left tippy toes. Maybe you get a moment of balance lifting that left foot. Alternate arm, alternate leg is hovering. Place that right hand back down. Come to sit over the top of the heels. Take a moment to come off of the shoulders, off of the wrists. I'm going to take that one more time on the other side. Come to find your downward facing dog. Taking that wider stance if that felt good for you, maybe exploring with the hand position this time. And then allowing some weight to come into that right hand, start to think about getting the light through that left hand. Sending energy and weight still into the back of the legs. Bring that left hand all the way to the back of the mat, maybe the hands stay to the mat, or maybe they come to hover beside the left leg. Start to think about maybe sending that left heel down to find a bit more stability and balance if it reaches. And then come onto the tippy toes of the right foot. Maybe the right heel, the right foot comes to hover. And then come to place the foot down, the hand down, embracing any wobbles that might come. Taking a moment, coming to sit over the top of the heels. Taking a round of breath here. I mean, if you're ready, finding yourself back in downward facing dog, taking a full round of inhale and exhale. On your next breath, if it felt good for you before, maybe you're hovering that right hand to the back of the right, to the back of the right corner of the mat. Maybe the hands connecting to the to the mat. So come to send that hand back behind you, the right hand, and then bend through the knees, straighten through the legs, bend through the knees. Straighten through the legs, and bending through the knees, straightening through the legs. Send that right hand forward, left hand to the back of the mat or hovering beside the left leg. Bend through the knees, straightening through the legs, bending and straightening, bending and straightening. Left hand comes forward. Beautiful. Come to send that right leg back behind you for three-legged dog. Bend the knee, bring the knee forward for a moment in Tiger's curl before stepping that foot forward. Maybe the hand gives it a helping hand. Take a round of breath here before coming to gently lower down the left knee for low lunge, coming up to rise. Round of breath here, hands above head or maybe to heart center. And then maybe having some blocks close by if you want to practice or use them. Going to draw the hips back, toes peel off of the mat, coming onto the heel for half splits. And then coming in and out, maybe tucking the back toes, rocking forward into low lunge, back into half splits. Moving backwards and forwards. If you haven't got the back toes tucked this time, come to tuck the back toes under. From halfway splits, coming into that low lunge, come to lift the back leg, rolling up into crescent lunge. Slowly start to tilt yourself forward, start to bunny hop that back leg in, come to hover the knee, 
left leg is in line with the hip or thereabouts, or maybe it's just gently hovering off of the mat. Bring the hands to heart center. Slightly start to tilt forward. Send the leg back behind you, left leg behind you for crescent lunge. Take a round of breath here. Come to cactus the arms, so draw the shoulder blades into one another. Elbows are drawing down to the ground. Heart is shining forward. And then from here, start to send the hands back up towards the sky. And then draw them down for cactus. Up towards the sky and draw them down for cactus. Up towards the sky and then draw them down for cactus. Hands at heart centre, start to lean forward. As you lean forward, come to lift that back leg and draw the knee in towards the chest. So you're curling up like a little bean. Maybe the hands come underneath the leg, underneath the left shin. Or maybe that leg is slightly lower, as I said previously. And then come to from where you are. Slowly start to expand yourself forward into a version of Warrior 3. So toes can be down to the mat or you can find yourself hovering the leg at hip height or thereabouts. Gather all that energy, draw it back in, find that curl like a little bean. Knee in towards chest, we are still standing on this right leg. Extend back into Warrior 3, your variation. Drawing it all back in, knee in towards the chest and then coming up to rise. Knee is still hovering, taking a round of breath here. And then slowly start to come to bend in this standing knee if there's not a micro bend in it already. Bring the hands to heart center. Slowly start to take this left leg over the top of the right leg. So as if you're crossing the legs, find an eagle. So you can either bring that left foot to the floor to the outside of the right ankle, or you can find that kickstand wrapping the left toes around the back of the right calf. Finding your focus, your drishti, your gaze here. Shoulders are drawing back and down. Maybe arms are up. Then on your next breath, coming to unravel, coming up to rise, hover the knee. And then for this part, you might like to stay where you are and explore your balance here. We're coming to find half moon, or you might like to come out and then come into half moon. Or we can do both. So let's, ex let's explore both. <laughs> so when you feel ready, slowly start to tilt forward. As you start to tilt forward, start to reach maybe for a block, or start to reach maybe for the earth, sending that right hand down towards the sky. Slowly start to open the body, turn the body towards the left side, and the left hip starts to open up, sending that left leg towards the back of the room. Ooh, that was a loud pop. Toes are facing the body, flexing through the foot, finding that heel kicking out towards the back of the room, embracing any wobbles or falls that might come. So a natural part of embracing and learning balance and micro movements within the body. So that's a way that we can just come into half moon. So you want to come a little bit more consciously into this position. So from our standing hovering leg where we was, coming out of eagle, you can bring that foot down. Bring the hands beside Tadasana. Maybe hang a block close by. So having that block close by, come to hover the leg, maybe draw the hands to heart center. Start to tilt your chest ever so slightly forward as you then send that leg back behind you. Maybe the toes are slightly onto the mat and you're using that motion of toes to touch. Doesn't necessarily, like I say, have to be where I am at. And then come to find that warrior three variation. So toes can be touching or you can have the leg hovering. Start to bring the hand down towards that block if you're using it. And then start to turn the chest, turn the body to face the left side. So you're opening up the left side, start to find some engagement through that leg. So flexing the toes, sending the heel, the energy of the heel to the back of the room. Maybe you've got this left hand on the hip 
or maybe the left arm is coming up towards the ceiling. Now if you're finding this pretty easy, maybe use it without the block, maybe challenge yourself with taking your gaze from the floor, maybe to the outside left side of the room, or maybe even up. You can add on to this flow, you can come out, finding the left toes to meet the back of the mat, straightening through the front leg, find reverse triangle, right fingertips up towards the ceiling. And you can move in and out here, challenging the balance in a slightly different way. Moving with a sense of flow and rhythm. And then when you feel ready, come to find that reverse triangle if you've not taken it. Come to cartwheel the hands, bend through that right knee, frame that right foot. Come to step the right foot back to meet the left foot. And then come to lower the knees or staying in plank. Lower yourself all the way down. Taking a round of locust, baby cobra or upward facing dog. Come to lower the knees, lower the head, lower the chest. Hands towards the rib cage, pushing up through tabletop. Send yourself into downward facing dog. Taking a round of breath where you are. Extending that right leg back behind you for three-legged dog. Come to open up the hip, finding scorpion dog. So we're coming to send the heel towards the left glute. Maybe taking some circles out. Come to re-extend through that right leg. Turn the torso to face downwards. Then come to bring the right foot to meet the left foot. Slowly start to walk your hands in towards the back of the mat. And then from where you are, you might like to have some blocks close by, or maybe the hands are on towards the mat. Come to find your standing splits. So that might be that your foot is just hovering slightly off the mat, or maybe hip is in line, or maybe the heel, the hip's a lot higher. So we've got the chest facing the front of the mat. Maybe you're lighting the fingertips, finding that sense of balance a bit more. And you can either stay here or you can add on. You can come to bend and open up like we just did in Scorpion Dog here. Maybe you get light through the left fingertips and reach round and take a hold of that right foot. Create a variation of Chapasana. Maybe kicking the hand in towards the foot to find that sense of strength between hand to foot, foot to hand. And then coming to soften, coming to let go, and then releasing, coming to find forward fold. Taking a round of breath here. And then rooting down the feet, coming up to rise, circling the hands out nice and wide, palms might meet, and then drawing them down through heart centre. Finding Tadasana. Taking a round of breath here. <clears throat> then from where you are, come to circle the arms up nice and wide. Draw the hands through heart centre, fold over the top of the thighs. Come to find halfway lift. And then if you're at the back of the mat still, come to walk your arms and hands out. And then come to find your downward facing dog. On your next breath, come to extend that right leg, left leg, sorry, back behind you for three-legged dog. Come to bend the knee, bring the knee towards the chest, step that left foot through, give it a helping hand if it needs it. Take a round of breath here before coming to lower that right knee down. Untuck the toes maybe, come up to rise for low lunge. Taking a round of breath here. And then coming to either use those blocks or bring the hands to the outside of the feet. Maybe come to tuck the back toes under. As you draw the hips back, toes peel off of the mat for half splits. Coming in and out of low lunge to half splits. If you're using the blocks, maybe the heart comes forward. Maybe you fold a little bit deeper on the half splits. And then from where you are, when you come forward into that low lunge, think about finding that energy through the back of the toes. Come to lift the, lift the back knee and come to rock up into standing. 
So we're coming to hover the right knee so that it's in line with the hip or thereabouts. So we're standing on this left leg, finding strength through this left foot, through this left glute. Maybe that right leg is a little bit lower. Maybe it's not necessarily all the way up to hip height. Maybe this side feels different from the other side. And start to lean the torso forward ever so slightly as you then reach the right foot back behind you, sending the hands up towards the sky, finding crescent lunge. <clears throat> Maybe the hands are at heart center for a round of breath. Taking the arms into cactus, drawing the elbows down the body, drawing the shoulder blades to one another, sending the heart forward. Keeping the feet where they are, the knee, front knee bent, come to send the hands up towards the sky. Draw the hands back down for crescent, uh, cactus arms in crescent lunge. And then taking them back up again, drawing them back down. Bringing them back up again and then drawing them back down. Drawing the hands to heart centre, start to lean over the top of that left thigh. And slowly start to drag that back foot inwards drawing it up in towards the chest. Maybe you interlace the hands around the front of that right knee, curling up like a little bean as you balance on that left leg. Taking a round of breath here. And then coming to extend into your warrior three. So extending that leg, right, le right leg back behind you. Maybe the toes come down or maybe they're hovering. Curling back up into that little bean, finding knee to chest. Re-extending. Re-curling. Using the breath to guide you. And then on your next breath, coming up to rise, bringing the knee, the right knee to hover. Taking a round of breath here. Coming to bend through that standing leg ever so slightly. Come to cross the top of the right leg over the top of the left thigh. Maybe the right knee, the right foot, sorry, comes to the outside of the left foot. Or maybe you're tucking the toes behind the back of the left calf. Finding eagle. Taking a round of breath here. And then coming to draw that energy back up, draw the knee back up. And then draw the hands to heart centre. Exploring with leaning forward. Finding that warrior three as you come up to open into half moon pose on the left leg. So once again, we've just come into that without thinking too much about it. So just notice, was there any wobbles? Did it feel not very stable, very grounded? Maybe it did for you. If it didn't, we can take that a little bit slower. So from potentially where you were, so hovering that right leg, finding your sense of ground, sense of balance, draw the hands through heart center. Start to tilt over the top of the thigh, finding the body horizontal to the mat, finding warrior three. And then bringing the hand down to the block or to hover the left hand, bringing that right hand to the right hip or to the sky. Start to turn the body to face the long edge of the mat, embracing any wobbles or balance that might come. Find that energy through that hovering leg, flexing the toes towards the face, sending the heel towards the back of the room. Maybe you're finding your balance here, or maybe you're flowing in and out, finding triangle into half moon. If you're finding that your balance is pretty breezy here. Maybe you're working with finding a gaze that's a little bit different for you and seeing how that works for you in terms of your balance. And then when you're ready, you're coming to find that reverse triangle. So just coming out, finding the right toes towards the back of the right mat, straightening through that left leg, Left arm reaches up towards the sky. Gaze might follow or might be down. Bending through that left knee, come to cartwheel the hands, frame that left foot. Step the left foot back to meet the right, lower the knees or stay up in plank. Come to lower all the way down. Find in your cobra, locust or upward dog. 
Come to frame the rib cage. Draw the elbows in towards the the all towards the rib cage, pushing up into tabletop or from plank. Come into fine downward facing dog. Taking a round of breath where you are, and then come to walk the hands in towards the back of the mat. Find in forward fold. And from your forward fold, start to find a little bit of a halfway lift. Start to take that weight into the right foot as you come to find your halfway splits on your left leg hovers, right leg is standing. Maybe it's slightly elevated off the floor, maybe it's hip height or maybe it's higher. Finding the weight into blocks, onto fingertips or maybe palms. Maybe a slight bend in that right knee as you start to bend and open through that left hip, sending left heel towards the outside of the right glute. Maybe you find out a balance on that left hand and right foot as you reach round to take a hold of the left foot with the right hand. Maybe you're finding that resistance, kicking the hand in towards the foot, foot in towards hand. And then coming to let go gently and place the left foot back to meet the right foot. Come to frame the feet, step the right foot, left back, <laughs> right and left foot back. And draw the hips back, finding balasana. Come to find child's pose. Take in two to three rounds of breath where you are. When you've done your final round of breath and coming up to find a seat over the top of the heels and coming over to one side and then coming to bring the legs out in front of you. Come to bend through your right knee, bring the right knee in towards the chest and then take that right foot over towards the left side of the leg, the left leg giving that a nice little squeeze in towards the body. And then this might be where you stay. You might like to take the left arm and wrap it around the front of the right thigh. Maybe the right hand comes back behind you for a gentle twist. If you're looking for something a bit deeper, you can come to tuck the left leg in. And then maybe this left arm comes to the outside of the right knee. Taking any variation that's calling to you on your mat today. And taking a round of breath here. And then coming to take the hands over towards the left side for a counter twist. Coming back through centre, coming to unravel the legs, straighten them back out in front of you. Bending into that left knee now, bringing the left knee in towards the left chest, taking that left foot to the outside of the right leg. Taking hold of that left knee, giving it a little hug with the right arm towards the body. Taking that left arm back behind you, taking a nice little subtle twist through the spine, maybe the gaze comes backwards. Maybe you pull, take that. Left that right foot that's stretched out in front of you and bring it inwards. Maybe that right elbow comes to the outside of the left knee. Maybe the gaze is back behind you past the shoulder. Taking a round of breath here. And coming to release. Through the arms, through the bind, come to counter twist over towards the right. Then come to turn to face the front of the mat, come to extend the legs out long. Give them a little shimmy, a little shake. And then scoot yourself forward, come to lay all the way down to the mat. Draw the knees in towards the chest, give them a little squeeze. And send the legs up towards the sky for waterfall pose. 
nice generous bend in the knees, give them a little wiggle and jiggle backwards and forwards and then side to side, releasing out through the legs. After all that effort that you've just popped into, standing on one leg for quite some time. And then maybe the arms come up to join, maybe taking some little circles out through the wrists, the ankles, before coming to find some stillness here. Taking a few rounds of breath. coming to place the hands back down towards the earth, the feet come down to meet. Take the feet out nice and wide, allow the knees to knock into one another for a restorative pose. Maybe the hands are away from the body, or maybe you've got one hand on the heart, one hand on the stomach, for a few rounds of breath here. feel ready, come to set up for your final resting pose, come to either extend the legs out long, maybe take the arms out wide, maybe you're finishing with the legs up the wall today or you're coming to find a seat. And coming to close down the eyes or take a soft gaze once you have found your final resting pose. Slowly start to tune your focus inwards. Maybe bring your gaze towards the point between the eyebrows, towards the place of where your, where your third eye resides. Coming to maybe take some little wiggles and jiggles through the body if it's still Wanting to you to anchor a little bit more in this moment before coming to focus back inwards again. Allowing the jaw to soften, the tongue to be heavy in the roof of your mouth. Allow the shoulders to soften, the neck to soften, the elbows, the kneecaps, the ankles. And then come to soften and settle into your final rest in pose, your Shavasana. When it is time to come out, I will guide you until then. slowly start to bring your awareness to maybe some noises within the room, maybe external to the room. Bring your senses back in. 
And maybe taking some movement through the fingers, the toes. And maybe drawing the legs into one another. Bringing the hands above the head, taking a full body stretch here. Before rolling over to one side to find a round of breath. When you're ready, coming up to take a seat. Maybe keeping the eyes closed or that soft gaze, drawing the hands through heart center. Drawing the thumb in towards the sternum, in towards the heart center, spreading through the fingers, firming into palm to palm. Maybe taking a nice big inhale and nice big exhale out through the mouth. Taking a moment to acknowledge your efforts here today on your mat. And gratitude to yourself for cultivating space and time for yourself. In gratitude to your body and the magic that can unfold in your mat and in your movement. In deepest gratitude to each of you for your practice here today. It has been an honour to guide you, as always. I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, week, year, life. Thank you ever so much. Until next time. Bye, guys.